What's up my nabooers? This is a real quick non-edited or at least not much edited video um, to show you a few things. So we have under user area one and also in the Naboo channels, Game Man Yeah and Brick Battle. Two new games for the Naboo. So let's take a look first at Game Man Yeah, which is called Game 5 at user area one. So this is a playable demo. Um, there's not much that really needs to get done, a few more sound effects, but, and I have one more feature I'm gonna be adding, but I think you're gonna have fun with it. It's four players, so for those of you who modify your keyboard. And it's got some pretty good music. So you can select how many lives you want, how many players are playing, how many pellets are gonna be on the screen, how much time you want to play for and go to play. So you use your inertia on your, oh, I died right away. So you could hit the other players too and you can bounce them around. Oh, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> so you want to pick up these little pellets, which are like space crystals. I just died, I'm done. Anyway, you have a countdown, you have a timer, um, you have your score, so it's pretty fun. I have one more feature I'm gonna add, like I said, and then, uh, <laughs> super cool. And then we'll get out of that in the next game, which I whipped up last night, um, just to see how quickly I can make a game with, um, with Naboo Lib. And, oh gosh, what is it called? It's called Brick Battle. Haha, <laughs> that's it there. So this was inspired by John's Basement. He's making a breakout game. So I was watching a movie last night and I thought, hey, I wonder if I could finish a game in the time it takes to make a movie. And sure enough, I can. So Naboo Lib is pretty quick. It's great to, uh, to build programs with. Here's a little intro. So we can select how many players we want. And how many balls we want on the screen. How long you want to play for and hit play. So there's a little different spin on brick out. So you can move your paddle around everywhere. And you see how the ball changed color? That's because, <laughs> I got another way ball, there we go. That's because that ball is now mine until the other player hits it. So if the other player hits the ball, it'll turn purple and then he'll get the points. But when it's white, it'll go through anything and it won't hit anything at all. So you get to, if you have lots of balls on the screen, in order to get all the points, you want to make sure that you can hit all the balls and make them yours. <laughs> so, pretty cool, eh? And then, of course, you can hit your opponent around, too. So, when, you're, uh, <laughs> when your opponent is trying to get near you, you guys can, like, whack each other. Move each other out of the way. So, it's going to be a lot of fun to see people playing multiplayer brick battle. And get up there. Get this guy going too. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so as far as the technical side is concerned, it's not as complicated as you might think. Um, take a look at Na Nabu Lib in my GitHub and some of the examples. But really, what you're doing, let's go to the top of the main loop here. Um, you initialize your Nabu Lib. And then you just want to initialize a graphic mode or a text mode. You can load patterns, colors, whatever you're trying to do. Uh, look inside of the uh, quiver because I have two programs that you can use for creating um, patterns and sprites. And of course, um, you want to enable your VDP int. Now, I talked to John from John's Basement a little bit about this and some of our comments because there's this function called wait VDP int. And this is an important function because what I was doing before was in the interrupt, uh, I was drawing out all, all everything, all the sprites. But you don't need to do that because if you do, you lose something which is really important, which is timing. And I wanted to time the video game based upon the uh, vertical trace. So what I've done is I created these functions here in Naboo Loop called enable, wait, and disable. And if there's, there's example code in here. So you can <laughs> take a look at all the comments inside of the header file for Nabulib. 
get it off the GitHub. It's in the uh, links in the description. So essentially what you're doing is you are looping while your game is playing. You're doing a bunch of stuff for checking for collisions and doing a bunch of things. Then you wait for the VDP and then you update all your sprite stuff. Okay, and now if you look inside of Nabulib, you actually have in the wait VDP, you can uncomment this little bit of code here and it'll actually flash the pause light for you if your code is taking too long and you're triggering a, a vertical retrace while your code is taking a long time. Now you have to, I mean, that's a lot of code you have to be able to do. So give you an example of what a lot of code looks like. I'm, so this is, uh, this is game five. Okay, now game five is pretty basic in the sense that um, there's only one screen, but let's take a look at the game loop. So the game loop initializes the music soundtrack because you're gonna have to take a look at, or the audio uh, soundtrack. You have to take a look at the um, the GitHub too because there's a Nabulib tracker in there, so the NT tracker for playing music from MIDI files. And let's see here, so we have Initialize players. Um, you can run in screensaver mode with zero players, so you, so I won't put any pellets on the screen if that's the case. But in my loop, you can see here that I check for collision if the collision bit's set. I check, uh, I do the player, so I only update the number of players that have been selected, and I do um, rocks, so how many rocks are on the screen. And then I have this, I've mentioned this before, I have this uh, volatile variable here called VDP ready, so I will specify, actually I don't think it's volatile anymore, because no, it shouldn't be, because, um, this is just in the main loop, it's no longer inside of the interrupt. So if one, the function for rock says that this particular rock needs to get updated, then it'll set VDP ready flag and it'll only need to move the sprite if it needs to move. So because this will run super fast, lots of times the sprite doesn't even need to move yet or a player hasn't moved or something hasn't moved. And then I update the time. Now because I am working off of the vertical retrace, I just need to count by 60, right? Because it runs uh, 1 60th of a, of a second. Now, the, let's see here. So the, the, the actual logic itself for the game to move rocks and everything, it looks like a lot of code, but it's not because it's like an if condition, an if condition, an if condition, an if condition. And the rest of this is not even executed because it just goes to whatever if conditions, right? So we do the same thing and take a look at, uh, this is the player code. And it looks like it's a lot of code. It looks like it's really big. But if you look at the top, the top part is just dealing with the joystick. And of course you have different directions of the joystick. So it looks like a lot, but an if condition is separating, or a case is separating two really big chunks of code. So you're actually not having to do as much as you think. Uh, initializing the players, I have structs for players and structs for the, uh, for the rocks, the asteroids. And if we were to take a look now at Rick Battle Code, you're gonna see a lot of similarities. So this framework was able to be used for, for uh, two different programs. So you can see I have structs for the players, structs for the rocks. I still call them rocks even though that they're balls, I guess. <laughs> I still have my update, my initialize, my initialize players, pretty much all the same stuff. Um, collision checking, everything is just, just throw it in there, right? So it was really easy to, uh, to build the brick battle because it's based on the same um, structure framework. So I'm going to throw both of these source code bases in GitHub so you guys can uh, essentially modify what I've done and build your own games. I want to see games. I don't want to see people just hoarding my source code. Make some games. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.